Hello there. My name is Shaji. I'm going to become a new beekeeper this year, May 2021. Beekeeping for Dummies. This book I got from my friend Scott. Wonder he really thought I would be able to do it. It's such a difficult task. Glad he did. But what really converted me into beekeeping is the sample of honey he kept at my desk from his apiary. It was the most flavorful honey I ever tasted. And I was instantly on board with beekeeping. About me, I'm a building engineer by profession. And before taking on any project, what I look for is what is best for its inhabitants. In this case, honeybees. Reading beekeeping for dummies cover to cover helped me to gain a lot of information about commercial beekeeping. However, surprisingly, I found that there was a disconnect between how bees live in the wild and commercial type beehives. Unlike the thin-walled commercial beehives, bees in the wild build nests inside thick-walled tree cavities. Wood in general has good thermal capacity and helps in keeping the micro environment inside the hive from steep fluctuations. My initial thoughts was maybe commercial beekeepers want to save on material cost. But looking at the statistics, there is about 40% loss of bees in, in winter in apiaries. So if a thick wall of hive can make a difference, it would be worth it. A thicker wall is of no value if you ventilating the beehive during the peak of winter. In the wild, bees live in dead air pockets within the tree and have only one bottom opening. I wonder why this was not possible in commercial beehives. In colder climates in winter, bees form cluster in the hive to heat themselves up. With the core temperature as high as 95 degrees Fahrenheit, the fuel for producing heat is obviously honey. But there is one byproduct of bee metabolism, and that is water vapor. These water vapors produced would rise up and would condense on the cold roof of the hive. Healthy honeybees can adapt to survive cold climate, but cannot afford to get wet during winter. As this can happen in the hive, if these condensed water droplets rain on them. We can all relate to this. As long as our winter jackets are dry, it can protect us from cold. But once wet, it's a different story. So to tackle the condensation problem, beekeepers ventilate the heck out of the bees to keep them dry. It works, but put undue stress on these bees. As a result, only 60% of the hive can survive winter in the northern colder climates. So I put my engineer's hat to work and I believe I found the solution. We don't have to ventilate the hive to keep them dry. Instead we can condense the vapor outside of the hive. I feel this would tremendously help beekeeping in colder climates. The implication of this would be that the weaker colonies would have better chance through winter and the stronger colonies would be better prepared for early honey production.
The solution is not anything fancy. It's just a copper metallic tubing. I call it Shaji's condensation tube. Let's look at Shaji's condensation tube and how it works. The condensation tube is basically a copper tubing and it goes into this high right here. The principle is very simple. In physics, we learned density of air changes with temperature. Colder the temperature, more dense and heavier the air and makes it sink. When air gets hotter, it becomes less dense and makes it rise up. Bees not only produce heat in their cluster, they produce water vapor. Water vapor is a byproduct of honey consumption by bees because bees use honey as their fuel and honey is 17% water. So if a typical hive has say 80 to about say 100 pounds of honey, that has the capacity to produce 17 pounds of water and that has to be condensed otherwise it will be raining on the poor bees. Also an interesting fact to note is water vapor is even less dense than the hot air at the same temperature. So if we have a layer of hot air and vapor, the vapor will rise above the hot air, air layer and it will be situated on top of the hot uh, air layer. Let us look at a schematic of an insulated beehive. In my case, I'm wrapping the hive with R13 foam insulation. I'm not providing any opening above where the bees would be during winter. Only Saji's condensation to you, which is situated between the top cover and the bees. Let's see how this concept plays in the beehive. If you look at this, this is a beehive setup. You have a hive, you have the Shaji's condensation tube, which is a copper tubing, and an insulation providing a dead air pocket. In winter, say it's about freezing and it's 30 degree Fahrenheit. Inside the hive near the bee cluster, let's assume the hive is perfectly insulated and the micro environment is about 50 degree Fahrenheit. How do bees can create a microenvironment like that. They vibrate their muscles and heat the hive up. Bees use honey as a fuel to generate this heat. The byproduct of this is water vapor. Since water vapor is lighter than air, it forms the topmost layer of the hive. For these vapors to condense, it needs a surface at a temperature lower than the dew point. If the hive is well insulated, as you can see in this scenario, with no air vent or leak, leakage at the top, these vapors need to get super saturated for condensation to happen which will not happen if we can use this condensation tube. Now, how does this condensation tube work? If you look at the air layer in the hive, the vapor layer, this is the vapor layer, is separated from 
the cold air by the layer of hot air. This is the hot air and this is the cold air. So the vapor layer is separated from the cold air by this layer of hot air. So condensation will not occur inside the hive. But if you look the layer of air in the tube, the vapor layer is in direct contact with cold air. So this is the vapor and this is the cold. So it's in direct contact with the cold air. Because of this, the condensation starts happening in the Shaji's condensation tube at this boundary between the hot between the hot vapor and the cold environmental air. Also, since the tube is made of copper, which has a good thermal conductivity, it would also absorb heat from the hot vapor further aiding in condensation. I did an experiment to find whether it really works uh, in a real beehive. So here is the setup. It's freezing outside around 30 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the high top cover is plexiglass with foam on top. Inside, I have placed an instant pot with water at about uh, 200 degree Fahrenheit. In, uh, in fact, I'll be placing that and setting the instant pot to 200 degree Fahrenheit. This would produce water vapor in a non-turbulent fashion. With turbulence, this concept may not work because the cold air in the eye hive might mix with hot vapor. So it is important to remember to keep all openings to the minimum. The condensation tube is behind the green mesh you just saw. That is the condensation tube. Let me show you the construction of Shaji's condensation tube. It's a three-quarter 45 degree copper elbow secured onto one of the super panels. I then fill the gap with spray foam. The green covered mesh is actually a can strainer so the bees cannot use that as an exit exit you have noticed that the inside of the panel are scored I did so that the bees would deposit propolis on the scored surface they will not do it if it's smooth Bees could create such a propolis en envelope in the hive. Propolis is antimicrobial and contribute to better health outcomes for the bees. Let me show the insulation covering. I'm using one inch reflective ISO foam board on the inside. ISO is very effective at warmer temperature. Outside is XPS foam insulation, which is good at freezing temperature. The intent of this is to create a top dead air pocket at the location of winter bee cluster. Back to the trial. The insulation box is on the high and have started the heater. It will take some time for the condensate to appear. 
the hive environment has to stabilize some initial condensation might happen before the hive environment stabilizes an hour has passed as of now the inside temperature is around 90 degree fahrenheit condensation is starting i see the first drop you can see the condensation drip is getting steady at this point one good thing about this technique is there is no moving part to fail also during winter without opening the hive I can monitor the amount of condensate to gauge the health of the bees let's break it up and see the inside to see if there has been dripping inside That is the initial condensate. Other than that, the inside looks pretty dry with no dripping at the bottom. This condensation tube can be installed in any hive and can be as effective. Tried it with just top insulation cover. So this is the same setup with an instant pot heat, heating water to 200 degree Fahrenheit. And yes, there you go. I can see the condensate dripping. You see, it works. It's 25 degrees centigrade, and let me break it down to see the things are. Take a look. There is hardly any condensation. The condensation is happening. I don't see any dripping inside. The bottom cardboard is clear of any condensation. Important thing to consider when using the condensation tube is to provide an opening below the bee cluster. I have done this using a shim with an opening below the deep hive. Let me talk about my hive. It's still not complete. When completed, I will put up another video so keep tuned my hive has a summer and a winter configuration this is the summer configuration it features an insulation over the brood during summer to stabilize the temperature in the brood there is a rubber screen a modified entrance with a ram 
Below is a pedestal. It is braced with steel angles and can support a lot of weight. In winter, it would act as a solar box. The perfect purpose of the solar box won't be to heat the hive. Since the hive would be insulated, it would be difficult for the bees during winter to sense warmer temperature for their cleansing flight. The solar box is meant to signal that the temperature is warm outside. The box would be insulated and has a double pane window facing south. The sun angle for the location would be around 45 for our latitude and months for the bees for doing their cleansing flight. Let me show the winter configuration. It has an outer wooden box enclosing the insulation. The outer box would be interlatched to the pedestal. It would be able to withstand strong wind and snow. It has a custom roof as well. Thanks for watching.